Imagine this. The sun dips below the horizon, casting a golden glow over a vast African savanna 1.9 million years ago. A crackling fire illuminates a small group of figures huddled around it, their silhouettes sharp against the fading light. The air hums with the sounds of the wild, distant hyena calls, the rustle of wind through acacia trees, the faint trickle of a nearby stream. These are not just any creatures, they are Homo erectus, the pioneers of what it means to be human. Their story is one of survival, ingenuity, and exploration, a tale that stretches across continents and millennia, etching the first chapters of our shared humanity. Buckle up, because we're diving into their world, a time when the seeds of everything we are today were sown under starlit skies. This isn't just history, it's the epic origin story of us all, and you won't want to miss a single moment. Let's step into their world. Picture a landscape of endless grasslands dotted with thorny shrubs, where herds of antelope sprint from prowling lions, and towering volcanoes loom in the distance, their rumbles a constant reminder of Earth's raw power. This is East Africa, 1.9 million years ago, where Homo erectus first emerged. The climate is shifting. Cooler, drier spells follow massive glaciations, reshaping forests into open plains. These changes push early hominins to adapt or perish. Unlike their predecessors, the smaller-brained Australopithecus, or early Homo species, Homo erectus thrives in this dynamic world, their bodies and minds evolving to conquer challenges we can scarcely imagine. Their world is unforgiving. Predators lurk in the tall grass, and seasonal droughts turn streams to dust. Yet, Homo erectus doesn't just survive, they reshape their destiny. They walk upright, their long legs carrying them across vast distances. Their bodies are lean, hairless, and dark-skinned, built for endurance under a relentless sun. Their brains, growing larger over generations, spark new ways of thinking, creating, and surviving. This is a story not of a single hero, but of a species that dares to dream beyond the horizon forging a path from Africa to the farthest reaches of the globe. What makes a human? Is it our ability to run, to speak, to create, or to dream? Homo erectus embodies the earliest traces of these traits, bridging the gap between ape-like ancestors and us. Fossils from Kubifora, Kenya, dated to 1.9 million years ago, reveal a species unlike any before. Their skeletons show taller, stronger bodies, with pelvises built for running, capable of chasing prey for hours. Mathematical models suggest they could sustain a five-hour run, a feat that would leave most modern humans gasping. This endurance, paired with hairless skin and sweat glands, lets them hunt in the scorching heat, outlasting even the swiftest antelope. Their brains tell an even more remarkable story. Early Homo erectus skulls, like those from Dimenisi, Georgia, 1.8 million years ago, hold brains of about 540 cubic centimeters, larger than a chimpanzee's, but modest compared to ours. Yet by 1.3 million years ago, skulls like Sanguron 17 from Java boast brains up to 1200 cc, nearing the modern human average of 1350 cc. This tripling in brain size over half a million years isn't just growth, it's a revolution. It fuels problem solving, planning, and perhaps even the first whispers of language. In the heart of a prehistoric camp, imagine a Homo erectus crouching beside a pile of rocks, striking one against another with deliberate force. Sparks fly, and a sharp-edged flake emerges. This is no random act. It's the birth of the Acheulean hand axe, a tool that defines their era. Unlike the crude Oldowan tools of earlier hominins, these hand axes are meticulously shaped, flaked on both sides to form a teardrop shape. Crafting one requires removing 20, 30 flakes, each strike guided by a mental blueprint. This isn't just tool making, it's a testament to foresight and creativity. These hand axes are the Swiss army knives of the Paleolithic. 
Picture a hunter wielding one to butcher a felled giraffe, its sharp edge slicing through tough hide. Another might use it to dig roots or shape a wooden spear. At Olduvai Gorge, archaeologists uncover a barbed bone point, possibly crafted by Homo erectus, hinting at their skill with materials beyond stone. These tools aren't just for survival, they're expressions of a mind that sees potential in raw materials, a hallmark of humanity. Now, imagine a chilly night in a cave, the air thick with the scent of smoke. A Homo erectus tends a small fire, its glow reflecting off the rocky walls. The earliest widely accepted evidence of controlled fire comes from Israel, dated to 780,000 years ago, but tantalizing clues from Kubi Fora suggest it could stretch back to 1.5 million years. Fire transforms everything. It cooks meat, making it easier to digest and freeing energy for growing brains. It wards off predators, warms chilly nights, and draws the group together in shared light. But what if fire wasn't their only ally? At Olduvai Gorge, 1.7 million year old soils hint at natural hot springs. Picture a group of Homo erectus soaking in warm, mineral-rich waters, boiling roots or meat in nature's cauldron. This scene, reminiscent of Japanese macaques basking in hot springs, humanizes them. They're not just surviving, they're finding comfort, perhaps even joy, in their harsh world. Fire and hot springs reshape their diet and lifestyle, paving the way for the energy-intensive brains that define us. Homo erectus doesn't stay put. Their fossils appear across three continents, from Ethiopia to Java, spanning nearly two million years. By 1.8 million years ago, they're in Demonese, Georgia, a testament to their wanderlust. But their journey to the Philippines, where 700,000-year-old tools are found on islands never connected to the mainland, raises questions. Did they drift on debris after a storm? Or did they deliberately cross miles of sea? Imagine a small band clinging to a makeshift raft of logs, driven by curiosity or desperation to reach a distant shore. This isn't just migration, it's exploration, a trait that echoes in every human who's ever chased the unknown. Their global reach reshapes their bodies and minds. In colder regions, they might huddle for warmth, perhaps wrapping themselves in animal hides. In tropical Java, they adapt to humid woodlands, their dark skin shielding them from the sun. Each environment molds them, yet their core traits, running, tool-making, problem-solving, remain. They're not just surviving, they're thriving, leaving footprints that will echo through time. Could Homo erectus speak? Picture a group around a fire, gesturing animatedly as they share stories of a hunt. Genetic studies point to changes in genes like SRGA P2C and SRGA 2D emerging around 1.9 million years ago, which boost brain connectivity. These changes suggest they could process complex thoughts, perhaps forming simple vocalizations or sign language. While their language wouldn't rival ours, it's plausible they communicated beyond grunts, laying the foundation for our linguistic prowess. Art 2 emerges in their world. In Java, a 500,000-year-old shell bears deliberate scratches, zigzags etched by a steady hand. Imagine a Homo erectus idly scratching the shell, then pausing as the pattern catches their eye. Is this art or a fleeting whim? Either way, it's a spark of creativity, a moment where a hominin sees beyond utility to something more. These scratches are the first brushstrokes of human expression, a legacy that grows into the masterpieces of today. Step into a hunt. A Homo erectus band stalks a towering giraffe, their hand axes gleaming in the sun. Bones from their kills, marked with cut marks, show they didn't scavenge. They hunted big game. Picture the coordination required. Runners flushing prey toward hidden hunters, 
their movements synchronized through gestures or calls. This isn't just brute strength, it's strategy, a dance of survival honed over generations. Their camps buzz with life. Imagine a family preparing a meal, roasting meat over a fire, while others shape tools or teach young ones to nap flint. Their diet, rich in protein, fuels their growing brains, setting them apart from earlier hominins with their heavy jaws and plant-based diets. This lifestyle, hunting, cooking, sharing, feels familiar, a glimpse of the communal bonds that define us. To bring this world to life, let's draw parallels to modern stories that echo Homo erectus's ingenuity. Consider the sand people of the Kalahari Desert, who, like Homo erectus, use endurance hunting to chase prey until it collapses from exhaustion. Picture a sand hunter, sweat soaked under the sun, tracking a kudu for hours, much like a Homo erectus pursuing an antelope 1.5 million years ago. Their shared strategy highlights the timeless human trait of persistence. Or think of the Bajau Sea nomads of Southeast Asia who dive deep for fish, living lives tied to the water. Their ability to navigate seas mirrors the Homo erectus who reached the Philippines, perhaps on rafts. Imagine a Bajau elder teaching a child to read the currents, just as a Homo erectus might have guided their kin across a strait, driven by the promise of new lands. Finally, consider a modern artist etching patterns into driftwood on a beach. Their act echoes the Homo erectus who scratched that Java shell, each mark a step towards self-expression. These stories, hunters, seafarers, creators, bridge our world to theirs, showing how Homo erectus's innovations live on in us. As climates shift, Homo erectus faces new challenges. In Java, woodlands turned to humid rainforest by 117,000 years ago, testing their adaptability. Imagine a group struggling to hunt in dense jungles, their tools less effective against new prey. Some populations dwindle, unable to cope, yet their legacy endures. On Flores, their descendants may become Homo floresiensis, tiny hobbits shaped by island dwarfism. In Africa, others evolve into Homo heidelbergensis, a possible ancestor to us, Neanderthals and Denisovans. The debate over their descendants is fierce. Some argue Homo erectus evolved into Homo sapiens across the globe, with gene flow linking distant populations. Others see Africa as the cradle, with Homo heidelbergensis as an intermediary. Picture a cave in South Africa, where Homo naledi, Another potential erectus offshoot buries its dead, a hauntingly human act. These mysteries, dubbed the muddle in the middle, remind us how complex our origins are, with Homo erectus at the heart. As we close, imagine sitting by that prehistoric fire, watching Homo erectus share a meal, their faces lit by flickering flames. They are not so different from us. Their tools, their journeys, their creativity, these are the sparks that ignited humanity. The lesson is clear. We are not defined by a single trait, but by our ability to adapt, create, and connect. Homo erectus didn't just survive. They laid the foundation for everything we are. So the next time you solve a problem, tell a story, or dream of distant places, remember, there's a little Homo erectus in you, urging you to keep exploring. Thanks for joining this journey. Until next time, keep chasing the spark. Thank you.